morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A special welcome to our guests and visitors, both here in house and online this day. We are glad you are here with us. We gather to be nurtured, fed, and sent, just as Jesus sent his disciples to proclaim the good news of God's love, compassion, and mercy for all people. We give thanks this day for our guest musician, Chris Peck, who is also playing in Vandalia today, so you won't have a chance to meet him, but uh, Chris, we are glad that you are here and you continue to bless us with your talents and gifts of music. <coughs> A special thank you to the men in house today, as today is Father's Day. We recognize that uh, not all men are called or are fathers, but often do love and are a role model as most fathers are. And so I offer this poetic reflection, originally written by Kurt Loebman, adapted by Deborah Mooney. It's titled, Praise Those Fathers. Let us give thanks to fathers who have striven to balance the demands of work, marriage, and children with an honest awareness of both joy and sacrifice. Let us give thanks for fathers who, lacking a good role model for a father, have worked to become a worthy and virtuous father. Let us give thanks for fathers who, by their own account, were not always there for their children, but who continue to offer those children, now grown, their love and support. As well, let us pray for fathers who have been wounded by words and actions of their children. Let us give thanks for fathers who, despite marital discord, have remained in their children's lives. Let us give thanks for fathers whose children are adopted and whose love and support has nurtured a thriving life. Let us give thanks for those fathers who are stepfathers, freely choosing the commitment of fatherhood and who strive to earn the, their stepchildren's love and support. Let us give thanks for fathers who have lost a child to death to continue to hold the child in their heart. Let us give thanks for men who have no children but cherish the next generation as if they were their own. Let us give thanks for those men who have fathered us in their role as mentors and guides. Let us give thanks for those men who are about to become fathers. May they openly delight in their children. And let us give thanks for those fathers who have died, but live in our memory and whose love continues to nurture us. Thanks be to God for the men in this world who love fatherly. Speaking of fathers, our baby bottle project ends today. If you took home a baby bottle to fill with change, check, or dollar bills, that will uh, be given to the Family Life Center, who helps to support growing families. I invite you to put that in the offering plate as they're passed today, um, or drop it off in the church office. Would be great so that we can get those to the Family Life Center. Men, I'm backing up. If you did not receive a gift bag on your way in, we have a gift for you today. Make sure you get one on your way out. There's some in the front pew and in the entrance way. We want to give you a little token of appreciation. I want to extend some invitations to you this week. There are lots of opportunities to fill your cup up. On Tuesdays, the Sacred Circle meets at 9 a.m. We are doing a study on human sexuality at this time. You can come worship at the cross this Wednesday night with our Episcopalian cousins. That worship service does provide Holy Communion. 
That's at the chapel um, at the foot of the cross there in Effingham. That's 630 Wednesday night. On Thursday, this is something new. You can join me in the chapel at the Lutheran Care Center for children's worship. This is a brief 20-minute time of uh, Bible story and song. And then on Friday, you can come back and worship at the Lutheran Care Center, also at 10 a.m. for a full uh, worship service with Holy Communion. Thursday nights, we gather at 7 p.m. for Come As You Are, which is a time to study scripture and uplift one another with prayer. There are a lot of opportunities throughout the week to nurture your faith. And if you can't be here on a weekend, to jump in on another worship service. So please take advantage of those opportunities. We're in need of an individual or individuals who will help in leading the planning and execution uh, of a float for the fair parade. So see me if you're interested in helping get things rolling with the float. Uh, this year's theme is agriculture and American heritage. So be thinking of how we might decorate a float this year. Today we're kicking off our Lutheran World Relief efforts for the summer, beginning with opportunities to help provide a way for children across the world to attend school. See the bulletin boards in the narthex and down in the parish hall. There's an opportunity for you to take a ticket and either purchase supplies or give a monetary donation, which would be a sponsorship for a child to go to school. They cannot go to school unless they have school supplies across the globe. It costs $6, roughly, to send a kid to school. So if you're missing buying school supplies, uh, you have an opportunity to do so and uh, an opportunity to sponsor children. There'll be more on that in the upcoming weeks in our ministry and mission uh, presentation today. We'll uh, uplift that ministry. I want to invite you to join us for a time of fellowship today after worship. Uh, Brent described it as, what did you say? There's a new bakery in town? Yes. Yes. So we're not going to tell you the new bakery, but the person who provided our refreshments it looks like they uh, have their own bakery. So there's a smorgasbord down there. Come on down for some delicious treats and coffee and beverages. And and they're and they're too. They, the proprietor of that bakery said they're open 24 7. They're open 24 7. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, okay. Sorry about that. Those sitting in the front row over here. Uh, I want to extend an invitation to Holy Communion today. Here at St. Paul, we believe that the table does not belong to the ELCA. It does not belong to the St. Paul Lutheran Church in Altamont. It does not belong to the pastor who presides here. That table belongs to Jesus Christ. Therefore, the invitation to receive comes from him. We're going to do communion a little different today, okay? So I need you to pay attention. Wave your arm if you're listening. I don't see all the arms, okay? As a way of stewarding our worship time together and honoring our musician who has another case to play uh, today, we're going to have two lines for communion. So both the east and the west side are going to begin communion at the same time. There will be communion servers here and communion servers here. You still continue to your pew by side aisle, consume the elements there, and an usher will be by to pick up the empty packaging. No worries. If you're one who feels you need communion from your pastor, I'm going to be switching sides each week so that you will receive communion from the pastor. If you'd like to assist with... Uh, being a communion server, please let me know. We're going to need more communion servers in the future. For those joining us online, you are also welcome to partake in the sacrament. Gather your elements at this time. With that in mind, I need two helpers to pick up empty communion cups. Do I have any helpers today? I'm looking for hands. Any helpers for communion? Ridley, thank you. Emerson? Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Are there any other announcements for the good of the whole? 
Please stand in body or spirit. Take a deep breath in here. Breathe in God's love. God is here. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this every season, whose word never fails, and whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Did you tell your dads happy Father's Day today? Yeah? Great. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brent. All right, St. Paul! Are you ready? Um, oh. I want to rock and roll all night. Before we ever be day, I want to rock and roll all night. And party every day. Hey, are we ready? I mean, I got my kiss shirt on. I even got these, uh, my kiss socks on. We're ready to rock. Oh, dear. I got to put another dime in the jukebox, baby. <laughs> We're not doing no Joan Jet. I, I know, I know. But if you're ready and I'm not, that's like, that happens in our marriage. Sometimes he's ready and I'm not. Sometimes I'm ready and he's not. So can you give me a second to get ready? All right, hang on. Time's up. Hey, you do that at home, too. Does it look good? Does it match my outfit? Don't really care. It makes my happy, happy wife, happy husband. Uh, that's how we do things in our marriage, right? Yeah, okay. Um, but before we teach them a song, I think we're going to need some help today. All right? So. But are they ready to help? I don't know. Are you ready to help? Yeah. Say yes. All right, well, what's the right way to say you're ready at a concert? What do you do at a concert? <laughs> yeah. okay. Get your fists up on them. Here we go. All right. Don't so hurt I'm, yourself I now. Need a, I need it. Whoa, Josh, you look really ready. Here we go. When we say Jesus, it's going to go like this. Yes, sir. 
get the raw almonds, you need either a fist pump or uh, you get a little biker rock star face. A little weak eye going on, all right? All right, here's the next verse. Are you kids ready? Here we go. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. When I love. Today's second reading is from the book of Romans. 
Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. that time. For it is not you who speak, 
but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father, his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. We praise you, O Christ. May you see it. students. Apostles are those who are sent after all they have learned from Jesus. Are you a disciple or are you an apostle? That's a tricky question, isn't it? Followers of Jesus are named disciples in the Bible. These 12 of a group of many were sent to be apostles. Those sent out in mission to show compassion and mercy, to tell others about God's love for them. So are we as church disciples or apostles? The mission statement of this church here at St. Paul, ELCA, on U.S. Highway 40 in Altamont is to be one with Christ, learning, teaching, caring, and growing. Sounds like discipleship and apostlehood to me. The first portion, learning and teaching, that's discipleship. Caring and growing, that's being an apostle. So we are both. But how do we do that? This is a lengthy reading with a lot of meat and potatoes. I'm just going to pull out a few things for you. Jesus instructs these disciples who are then sent as apostles with the same authority that he has. They have witnessed him performing miracles. They have witnessed him feeding people, sitting with the clean, the unclean. They have witnessed him pulling the tax collector in and inviting him to the table. And did you notice that? The tax collector is now one being sent. There's transformation there that has happened. <coughs> transformation happens when we are touched by God's love. That is the role of the church, of us as disciples who have learned the way of Jesus, who are then sent out to share that love with others. Jesus tells them not to go out into the far lands, not to go to the Samaritans. He tells them to stay right here in your area amidst your own People. That's saying the harvest is plentiful right here around us, but the laborers are few. Who are willing to move from discipleship to being sent as an apostle to share God's love? I've been wrestling that with that this week. I will always be a disciple. Disciple. There is so much more I can learn about the way that Jesus lived his life, the way that he sacrificed himself for the forgiveness of our sins. I have a lot to learn about giving and sacrifice. But yet I have been called by God to be a voice on behalf of Jesus, to be sent out. And that is what the church is called to do. When we gather here each week, we gather to be discipled, to 
being taught the ways of Jesus. And then we are sent out to pour out the love that we have received through the meal, the forgiveness that we have heard again. We are to take that out into the world and pour it upon worthy people. Did you catch that? The worthy. I think worthy means a little different than we read it most times. Worthy means like they deserve it, right? You're worthy if you deserve it. Pay attention to that word. Jesus is saying the unclean, the lost and forsaken, those who are possessed, the people of that time and day whose society labeled as outcasts, those are the ones who are worthy. He is pointing directly to oppressed people. Who are the oppressed people right here in our own community? right here in our own state of Illinois, right here in the United States, and then farther. Who are they? The black, the brown, those in the LGBTQIA plus community, the widowed, the poor, the divorced, those whose society labels as unclean and unpure and not good enough, God sent Jesus to die for them, for the forgiveness of their sins, no differently than for the forgiveness of yours or mine as white people. Look around. We are a white community. We do not know what it's like to live as a black or brown person. We don't. Look around. Who is missing from this space and why haven't they come to be here? Because they don't feel welcome? Because they don't feel worthy? Because we haven't invited them to the table? because they haven't heard that God loves them and Jesus died for them? That's probably true. Because society beats them up every day, all day long, and the voice of the very people who have sat at Jesus' feet and heard the word of God's love for them have not taken the time to share it outside of the space of a faith community. If we are honest with ourselves, talking about our faith is really difficult. We don't know what to say. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me when I'm good and do the things I should, because the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me when I'm bad, even though it makes him sad, because the Bible tells me so. It is as simple as that. When we are good and we are bad, we are still loved. When we mess up royally, we are forgiven. God loves us for who we are as humankind. Humankind. God created every single human being, and he created every single one good. Whenever we look at another person and we judge them for how they live or for who they are, we are sinning. Therefore, we all need a Savior, Jesus. And when we come here and we hear that we're forgiven and we get a fresh, clean slate start for the week, it makes us feel good. It makes us want to stand up on top of the church and shout at it all night long. Yes, Brent, that one was for you. That's a kiss song. Makes us want to shout it from the mountaintop so that everyone knows they are loved. That is our job. Because many of us have been disciples our whole lives. Some of us have been disciples more recently in our lives. But the teaching is the same. It is about God's love for all people. I don't believe I have the power to cast out demons or illness or disease because if that were true, it would have happened by now. 
I got a lot of people I would love to go and lay hands on and just let them be healed. We got to read between the lines of the scripture. The story is about the outcast. And the healing element is love. Love. Henry Nouwen says that healing starts when we sit in solidarity with someone, when we are willing to enter their pain and listen to their story. That is healing. That is showing God's love. In Romans, we heard that God's love is poured into your hearts through the Holy Spirit. It's a gift given to you by God that we are charged with sharing. When our cup is overflowing, we have plenty to share. That moves us from a space of contentment with having for ourselves to a space of mission. And Jesus said, it isn't going to be easy. It's going to be uncomfortable. My sacred circle group knows this well. When we are uncomfortable, I say, good, because that is when you're going to rely on God to help you. We heard Jesus say, don't worry about what to say. God is going to give you all you need. God will give you all you need to love the harassed, to love the helpless, to go out there and be like a shepherd who is gathering all of the lost sheep so that they may know that they are welcome here. We cannot say all are welcome if we don't truly mean it. Let our welcome be heard near and far so that God's love may flood this earth. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we are your disciples. We are learning. And God, you call us to be apostles, to come from this place and to be sent into the world to shine your light and your love. God, show us how to do that more faithfully. Give us all the strength and courage that we need. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.
about our efforts and how we might help provide school kits. This is our mission and ministry moment for today. Equip farmers 
farm workers, and all who labor on the land to produce a harvest. Nourish crops with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Restore land ruined by pollution or misuse. God, in your mercy, hear your prayer. For those who govern, we pray. Empower those who seek peaceful solutions to conflict, and embolden those who advocate for all who are oppressed. Work through systems of government to establish justice throughout the world. God, in your mercy, hear your prayer. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abandoned. Embrace any who long for successful treatment for cancer, mental illness, or freedom from addiction. Heal those who are in need of wholeness of body, mind, and spirit. We lift to you Eric, Greg, Heather, Becky, Dave, Don, Dwight, Arlen, Roger, Darren, Carol, Dennis, Evelyn, Betty, Cindy, Kayla, Raven, Evelyn, Shirley, Reverend Gary, Sarah, Alverna, Reverend Bob, and the residents and staff at the Lutheran Care Center. God, in your mercy, hear your prayer. For the young men and grown men and forefathers, we pray. Console children who are estranged from their fathers. Console those grieving the death of a father. <clears throat> Console fathers who have lost a child. And all who long or have longed to be fathers. Draw near to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. God, in your mercy, Hear me. For those who endure racial hatred and slavery, we pray. Cast out the demons of white supremacy that make us believe lies about ourselves and our neighbors. Help us to learn and to love compassionately without borders, just as Jesus did. God, in your mercy, Hear me. For all the saints we give thanks, receive into your eternal care all those who have died, and fill us with hope that does not disappoint. God, in your mercy, hear me. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. At this time, we receive your tithes and your offerings that not only help to support the mission and ministry here at St. Paul, but they help to support the whole people of God for the whole church of God.
of our lives and our offering share and the meal that we are about to receive, let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the bearer of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and our grace. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to God as we remember. And the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, it is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table is set. Christ is the host. Come as you are. For those joining us online, this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Again, a reminder, we will have two lines coming forward on both sides.
invite you to stand and bow your spirit. Thanks be to God. 